Hello, I'm <laughs> I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> Let's take it again. Now, uh, hello, I'm Thomas Crothers. I'm Will Leggetter. And today we have a very special guest. We have Sophia Jones over here. Yes, you are. Are you sure? <laughs> I am sure. I'm sure. Oh, very good. Now, uh, today we are talking about uh, 1961's West Side Story, directed by Joan Robbins and Robert Weiss. Unlike other classics, West Side Story grows younger. Sophia, as soon as this is one of your films that you brought forward, would you like to introduce the film for us, please? Introduce um, modern retelling, not modern, but modern at the time, oh my God, um, Romeo and Juliet story set in the Upper West Side of New York City, gang rivalry, love story, musical. Choosing intentionally or not to skip out nouns and uh, <laughs> adverbs. <laughs> Just going to stick with a couple of uh, a couple of words. Well, let's uh, kick it off. Obviously, this is based on the stage musical. Uh, music by Leonard Bernstein. Lyrics by Stephen Sondheim. Originally directed by uh, Jerome Robbins. Uh, choreographed by Jerome Robbins. Uh, book by Arthur Lawrence. And produced by Hal Prince. Uh, oh. rest, rest in peace. Well, they're all dead now, aren't they? Arthur Lawrence is no, right, not, so, not dead. No, no, oh, don't no. worry, no, don't no. worry, don't <laughs> worry. I know that. I know that he's this not. This episode dead. is cursed. Oh, <laughs> I hope not. If he dies, if Stephen Sondheim dies within the week, I'll be very. Oh my god! Imagine. He didn't get any of his ninetieth. <laughs> he didn't get any of his. There were all these. Oh, 90th. imagine if every single person we talk about on this podcast dies within a week. Just becomes one of those podcasts. <laughs> Just need to avoid ensemble movies, <laughs> Ocean's Eleven, <laughs> so we don't knock out the <laughs> fifteen. Mind you, uh, Casey Affleck probably wishes he was dead. Um, I hope not, though, because he's a great Why actor. Why would you wish that? I don't know because stupid people have. Anyway, we'll save that for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cut to Brie Larson. Stud. No, Brie. Brie Larson did give him a hug afterwards, though. So. Mm. <laughs> in her words her actions spoke for themselves yeah and she was saying don't clap anyway is that she did a lot better than denzel oh my god denzel Den denzel denzel uh, washington <laughs> yeah no denzel it's going thank thank you dear i'd like to say denzel washington you're the reason i'm an actor then it cuts to him and he's got a face like a bloody sour patch bloody <laughs> Angry. <laughs> that put me off Denzel Washington for like a good couple of years. It took me like a rewatch of Malcolm X to get behind <laughs> Denzel Washington again. It was it was Tom Hanks for me after Ricky Gervais. Gervais, yeah, yeah. That's, I, yeah, I love Tom Hanks, but yeah. that me too. There's, there's no need for that, Tom. Yeah. Come on. The I have judged <laughs> like my my estimations and likings of actors and actresses and, and directors and other people, I don't know, I'm just listing everybody at the Golden Globes, have changed astronomically based on their reactions to some of those Ricky Gervais jokes. Blanchett, just even higher, because <laughs> of their laughter. A lot of people laugh, but some... Amy That's Poehler, like not a big Amy Poehler fan anymore, because she had a face like a slapped ass. <sighs> anyway, not good. Tom. Not good at all. Tom. Also, I don't know if I do love Tom Hanks. Oh, no, no, he, he is. Uh, oh, he's a, well, I was going to say a national treasure. He's not British. <laughs> um, 
But the you terminal, well I mean, we'll, we'll do a Tom Hanks segment, of course, but I, 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 I've got many word, good words to say about the terminal. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Castaway is great. Yeah. But Captain Phillips? But Captain Phillips. It's wonderful. I'm just uh, not. I'm terminal. just not seeing it. Sleepless in Seattle isn't that great. Um, oh no, no, it's not. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump is good. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. I like it's it. Fine. Were you? Like I've me, seen the very disappointed. I've seen the boat. Oh, sorry. Go on. Were you very disappointed with the post? Uh, I thought, the yeah, it, terrible, really bad, it, it really had bad film. <laughs> wonderful names in, and I've never seen that. Don't. And then they had that weird All the Prisoners Men like Easter egg, like it was a Marvel <laughs> film, but it was like, <laughs> I, I know a guy. It's like, what, what, is, what is this film trying to be? <laughs> anyway, we don't like the post. Uh, t- what, uh, Philadelphia, I like Philadelphia. Hey, Philadelphia, hey, hey, Philadelphia's got a lot going for it. Splash. <laughs> Big. <laughs> Big's good. <laughs> Big's wonderful. Big's good. Oh, yeah. Weird yeah. ending. Well, not weird yeah. ending. Have weird, you, have you weird seen the middle. middle. <laughs> have you seen the awful CGI they've redone on Splash oh Did, on Disney digital, Plus? Yeah, they, they look yeah. like digital oh. fur technology. And they've made her hair really long. So you can't see her bum when she runs the sea. It's <laughs> hilarious. It's so funny. Oh, because digital fur technology worked a treat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> During our airplane like episode, that. me and Will went for a good 10 minutes tangent talking about cats. You should do a cats episode. Well, well I don't know if I no. want to spend money on that film again. I mean, I didn't spend money on I have an unlimited cat. Everybody should. Well, um, definitely when, uh, when the cinemas reopen. Everybody get an unlimited cat. Anyway, that's enough rambling. We've <laughs> managed to go on four different tangents. <laughs> Let's have a bit of a history lesson. So, exciting, I know. So, the original idea for West Side Story was for Catholics and Jews. Uh, well, no, Ooh, they had they wanted to they wanted to modernize West Side. Story. Uh, mm-hmm. Modernise Romeo and Juliet, and the original idea was, yeah, uh, Catholics and Jews. Uh, however, Leonard Bernstein uh, really got excited by uh, Latin music, and then he started researching Latin gangs and the gang violence there, and he thought, perfect, they bring in Stevie, uh, Hal Prince producers, producers, <laughs> and Sean Connery's there apparently too, um, <laughs> producers. Have you seen the, I presume you've seen the interview clip where Sean Connery says, um, it's okay if I slap my wife. You did an interview in which you said, it's not the worst thing to slap a woman now and then. As I remember, you said you don't do it with a clenched fist, it's better to do it with an open hand. Mm. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't love that. I haven't changed my opinion. You haven't? No, not at all. You think it's good to slap a woman? No, I don't think it's good. You I don't think, think it's bad? It must, I don't think it's that bad. I think that it depends entirely on the circumstances and if it merits it. Yeah. And what would merit it? Well, if you have tried everything else. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Barbara Walters and she goes, you've had some opinions on uh, domestic abuse. <laughs> uh, you, do you really think you can hit a woman and go, well, oh, I can sort her out. <laughs> and women are pretty good at this. They, they can't leave it alone. Yeah. They don't they want to have the, the, the last word, and you give them the laugh, last word, but they're not happy with the last word. They want to say it again and, and get into a really provocative situation. Then, I think it's absolutely right. Um, <laughs> not Sean's best. Uh, not Sean's, absolutely not. Uh, no, Sean's. He's, he's done better. <laughs> Uh, like The Rock. Do we like The Rock? <laughs> not the, not the Dwayne. <laughs> no, say Dwayne. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Even more tangents. This is getting borderline absurd. This is the longest we've taken to get to an actual episode. <laughs> to get to the Great. actual episode. We should do right. this more often. Here we go. West Side like Story. 1961. It goes up. 
at the Winter Garden Theatre. Not really a success. The critics were divided. Um, you know, people didn't want to uh, go and watch gangs kill each other and have a miserable night. Uh, it wasn't, just wasn't, it was groundbreaking as most things are. And as groundbreaking as it was, it was uh, not that well received. Uh, and The Music Man actually won uh, Best Musical at the Tonys that year. The big success of the film, of the show, pardon me, came about from the film. The, by that time, Maria and Tonight uh, had become hits and had had multiple, uh, I think Sinatra did Tonight, uh, Johnny Mathis, I think, did Maria, and those were the big ones. After that point, these were becoming household songs, and it was the film that blew up the uh, West Side Story legacy. Like with Grease? Yeah, or Little Shop, or any of A lot. the others. Or, yeah, or Rocky, horror, in a way. Um, yeah. yeah. So, when was... I think it's fair to say we're all musical people. Um, Absolutely. Me and <laughs> Will are certified <laughs> sundown boys. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. That We've was got... the most tragic thing oh. I think I've seen. And that's going to be the thumbnail. And that's the... Yo. Uh, me, and, me and Stephen. It's me and Will. <laughs> and then Stu and Sundown with his, with his unfortunately <laughs> dodgy eye now. That is very... Yeah. I'm still annoyed that this cor this corona has cancelled all the 90th celebration stuff. Because, mm. well, no, I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, as long as he finishes this show, as long as he finishes the show that he says he's writing. Oh, he's writing a new one, is he? Yes. As long as he gets it done. It doesn't even matter <laughs> if it's good. As long as he gets it done. <laughs> Uh, I, I have my hope. I have my hope uh, from Stephen. Right. Opening line Hall of Fame. Knock it off. Settle down. Not the best. Uh, not yeah. the best we've had. <laughs> but I feel like the lasting impression of an, of like an opening thing for West Side Story isn't so much the words that's just spoken, yeah. but the... Oh, no. But the prologue itself of like the rhythm well becky got very annoyed with la la land because she felt that I see, yeah the gen the actual closing line which is uh, either uh i think we should go yeah let's go or one two three four one two three four uh undermined uh the looks mm. uh however that's not the category the category is opening line for the fame. that's what i yeah oh, the opening of it Opening line, Hall of Fame, Sophia. But let's talk about the actual opening. <laughs> the, uh, well, let's talk about the overture first. Incredible yeah. credits. Those beautiful colours, those grid lines. And this leads back what? to... Oh, so go on. What is it meant to be? Is it just a pattern? I've never... It's New York. It oh. literally fades into New York. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry to get so angry. <laughs> it's the grid lines. Oh, it's like a big, massive site plan of New York. Yeah. To, to it, use the, the correct terminology. And then it fades into... <laughs> Ray <Wow>. Romano. <laughs> <laughs> and then... What's your favourite piece of graffiti in the opening, uh, in the opening scene? I know mine. Oh my god. What is it, Tom? It's the Go big on, jets on the floor. <laughs> who, who had time to do that? It's too much to choose from. I'm sure there's a shark stink in there. <laughs> Which leads us into the profanity aspect. Um, you know, it was, it was uh, good old Stevens. Uh, which I think we should refer to Stevens on them as Stephen from this point on, just so that we Steve. get a, Steve, Steve, Stevie, Stevie, S Dog. <laughs> um, it was Steve's original idea. He wanted it to be the first uh, Broadway musical to have fuck and shit. 
Um, it was going to be uh, with uh, Officer Krupke. It was going to be Officer Krupke instead of Krupp you, fuck you. And uh, Jet Song, when the shit hits the fan, instead of Spit. Uh, spit, famous for hitting fans. Well, no, I guess I guess shit's not famous for hitting fans either, is it? Um, <laughs> but alas. Uh, and obviously you don't get that. Um, you don't get that. Uh, so there's a lot of... Uh, gee whiz. Do we, think it, do we think it sounds ridiculous? I, I think it, gets it away. completely works. But... It gets away with it because it's a musical. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Good old Arthur Lawrence became a director in his own right. Directed the original Gypsy. Uh, then directed uh, the Patti LuPone Gypsy Revival in 2008 because his uh, uh, gay husband lover died and uh, it was his dying wish uh, for him to revive Gypsy with Patty. That's so cute. Uh, so that he would uh, have something to do in the coming years to get his mind off things in the early days. Lovely, uh, lovely stuff. And then Arthur Lawrence uh, did the uh, revival of West Side Story with Spanish, uh, actual Spanish lyrics for all of the uh, Spanish uh, parts. Uh, and guess who like they brought that. in to uh, patch up the uh, Spanish lyrics? Famous. Lin Manuel Miranda. There you go, Lin Manuel oh. Miranda. Oh no. No, Steve loves him. He's the only reason. He real does. Man. Everyone loves him. I don't I, get it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is this the first time that we've ever had a conversation and all three people do not like Lin Manuel Miranda? Um, this is success. Just like ever? Oh, you, come, come to Sheffield. Come to Sheffield. Come to That's London. That's where they all hide. Come to anywhere. <laughs> they, 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 they love it. I mean, it's great. It is. It is a great show. I don't like it at all. I don't think the songs are good. I don't. I personally can't get behind it in the slightest. All I know is any everyone who I know who's seen it hasn't liked it. Yeah, so. everybody gets disappointed. Even like diehard Sinead. Um, yeah, she didn't even rave about she it. She didn't so. rate it. I mean, she was mainly annoyed because in England they sing it British. Like with Wicked. Yeah, but Wicked set in a fantasy world. It's yeah, not... but they they sing American though. They speak British, and that's off-putting. Yeah. True. I think it's the thing that uh, Hamilton is literally American history. I mean, they're throwing the history aspect out of the way anyway with the colorblind thing. So I guess it you can give them British accents too. But I don't know. I just don't. Like, I just don't like Lin Manuel Miranda that much. I think he's everywhere. I think he gets where he's water overrated. can't. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, well, In the Heights has been uh, postponed. What a shame. Yes. Um, Have you seen, you've been watching Andrew Lloyd Webber's fun little videos, haven't you? When he did the... Uh, <laughs> <Did> you... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's obviously never heard of Lin-Manuel Miranda, even though Lin-Manuel Miranda looks up to Lloyd Webber as an inspiration. He's just like, oh, what's this? this is, the kids like this. Let's... Oh, you voted Andrew. today. You voted today for uh, wishing you were somehow here again. So I'm going oh, to play it. And he just plays it. I love him so much. Yeah, he's great. Best, so cute. Best Andrew Lloyd Webber show. Go. Evita. Sophia. Mm. Um, I've gone off most of them, but why? Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Superstar. I know, see, Jesus Christ Superstar, I've always thought was uneven. You think Evita's uneven. I think Jesus Christ Superstar has a lot of skippable, uneven moments. I think so. I do, I agree. I mean, there's no Lloyd Webber that I wouldn't skip. His highs are very, the highs of Jesus Christ oh. Superstar are very, very high. I would yeah. skip But I also there's think I there are a lot of lows. Skip. What about... Like, Every every Andrew Webber show. Hey, hey, Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, uh, skip that. I, no, I don't that. But it depends what production. Like if I was, but if I was watching it in certain productions, like that's the Regent's Park version. That's like one of my favourite bits because of the way they do it. Yeah. Have we all watched it on YouTube? Jesus With Christ! Tim. Oh, the the, yeah. the Tim Minchin one. Tim is wonderful. Tim is great. Effort. I didn't watch it on YouTube. It was um, a certain 
lady from my past's favourite production ever. Of I anything. got so it. So she made me watch the DVD a lot, and I've, I've, I've. Yeah, I watched never, that. I got that yeah. for like my twelfth birthday, and watched it like. I don't like Mel C. All the time. I don't I like. Do. I, uh, I fucking hate Chris Boyles. Sorry, I think... excuse my French. Chris oh no, he's a creep. He's a perv. Oh, Chris Miles, yeah. Chris Miles is a perv. Um, I really, I had, I really, really, really like the 70s film with Ted Neely and Carl Me Anderson. too. I think that's exceptional. Yeah, that and I think and that the smooths part. over some so, of the I, shittier parts. I'm not a fan of Ben Foster as Jesus. Nor he's am not, I. Yeah. He he's doesn't hit the note either, phantom. does he? He's no. a much better phantom. I he's a wonderful see phantom. His phantom. Um, he's a great Brad. He's the best. That's he's the best true. Brad I've seen I, since Barry Bostwick. Oh, I Good love that. Barry Bostwick. Where did where did Barry Bostwick have a more of a career? I don't know. Beats me. Beats him. I bet he's very angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> him and uh, yeah, and then they're in. The, none of them even come back for shock treatment. Apart from Richard and uh, Patricia and uh, Squeaky, what's the Squeaky name? What's Nell? But what's the name of the actress? Shit. <laughs> no, it, her name's Columbia, and she's called Nell Campbell. Yeah. Have you seen Shock Treatment? I haven't. Shock Treatment is pretty great. What is it? It's the sequel to Rocky Horror. I've literally never heard of it. It's right. So Richard O'Brien's original idea was to make a musical series of films where you would have Brad and Janet be the returning characters and like American Horror Story, everybody else would return but play different people. Um, Again, certain lady from the past preferred it actually uh, to Rocky, which I don't think is the correct thing. (laughs) But Rocky, uh, sorry, but Shock Treatment has a lot of good going for it. And, and it, but instead of Susan, uh, it's Jessica Harper. Um, oh, bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> she's in um, Phantom of the Paradise. She's in Suspiria. Um, she's in a few things. Anyway, uh, enough about musicals that we're not talking about. Your, do your, do, right, you get, you get 30 seconds to do your Evita argument, Sophia. Oh, no. Oh, I can't. But it's just, I think I've been, I was tainted. My opinion of it was tainted um, by the Marty Pedo version that I saw. That was pretty terrible. But, did you see prior... that well at Leeds Grand? Uh, I did. Um, no, I, I did. fell asleep. It was, yeah, it wasn't the best. Uh, the guy played Shay, a wonderful range, mind you. In When he kept Marty rolling Pello. in, he went, he went... Oh, yeah. He went higher, didn't he? He went even higher. Yeah, but uh, he was the... like a wet lettuce. You, he you was look like at a the... wet lettuce. Oh, he was. My mum my was so excited to the, see him. the sex of Antonio. And then you look at... Uh, it was like going back to David Essex. <laughs> one, of, <laughs> one of the weirdest... Oh, what a circus. Yeah. Elaine Page's, like, firmness on never playing a different version of Evita... And always Literally. only playing David Essex on that Sunday show. <laughs> <laughs> it always baffles me. Um, she she played her version life. of Adol Vice yesterday. She played like literally. She Yours plays truly. her own. She plays her own songs she all does. the time. She and does. I know that like Elaine Page fans are listening to Elaine Page on Sunday, but she <laughs> takes it a bit far. <laughs> it's like the amount of time. Th- there must be a, at least a twenty-five percent of her episodes have featured I know him so well the original <laughs> I feel I'll add a shout out on Lane you a shout out for an I, had, show. I had one for a show I was in when we did Fiddle on yeah. the Roof we got one but break your legs not, Ooh, not actually break your legs <laughs> and cut to, <laughs> cut to the laugh the 2009 revival of Oliver starring Rowan Atkinson as Fagin played at London's Theatre Royal Drury Lane and uh, that theatre is in fact celebrating this week because Tuesday marks the 350th anniversary of the first performance there on May the 7th 1663, the theatre opened with a performance of The Humorous Lieutenant by Francis 
Louise Beaumont and John Fletcher. And then a couple of years later, I starred in Billy. <laughs> at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoy the 350th anniversary celebrations. Now, let's <laughs> I love that one. Oh, what a woman. What a, what a woman. <laughs> I I'm think gonna, Anita I'm... has too many annoying talky bits that I wish they would either just talk or sing. Because I just, I, I don't know. They called me up. Because I, I like I the I don't music. believe they actually called me up. Like, but yeah, like some bits I love, some bits mm, I love. She's the one who kept like, you where you I had, are. I had, because I had the, like, original, um, like, vinyl from when they released it before they yeah. did it. The Julie and, like, Covington I, I love this, concept Yes, album. Julie Covington concept album, indeed. And Carl and Wilkinson, that's, isn't that's it? great. Yes, Carl Wilkinson. Yeah. But yeah. I, just I did, really I enjoy, know. I really enjoy the Ricky Martin one. Yeah, I think a, he's wonderful. He's yeah. good, and so is Michael Cerverus. Mm. Elena Rogers, screamer! Oh my god! I, that, maybe that's also what it is because I don't like a lot of the style in which the women sing it. Yeah, I don't like it, it when breaks. they scream it. That is why well, when, when Patty does it. I listen to Elaine. That's why Patty oh, does it. I can't listen. I can't listen to Patty. I, I can't listen I, to Pat, it. That's Patty it is not ears bleed. an Ava Peron. No, I'm cut sorry. to cut to uh, let me <laughs> cut to three what, separate, and you three, seen <laughs> three different yeah three different clips that prove you wrong. When she's do, when she do uh, Tony Awards where she does um, the other hand of power on a plane. <laughs> 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 it doesn't matter what those morons say. Our nation's leaders are a feeble crew. And then she goes, um, where we, oh, the bollocks. Th there you go, fun anecdote. <laughs> Lady from the past. Ooh, very ominous way to put it. <laughs> um, but she always thought it was where you'll be handed power on a plate. Because she thought she mm. wanted, she, oh, kept, yes. she kept, didn't, she didn't like it when they made Evita like bad. Like be a bad person, <laughs> which she is. I mean. So she didn't like the fact that it's uh, yeah. real. Yule, even though that's the gag, <laughs> that's the Lady Macbeth. It's a great part. All you have to do is sit and wait, keeping out of everybody's way. Will you be handed power on a plate? Cut to that clip. Will you? And then also cut to where she misses his hand. Because uh, they were doing it in a, in a, in a bigger theatre than uh, for the Tony Awards. So she goes to take his hand, but completely misses. Uh, and then... The to um, her doing Rainbow High on uh, the oh, closing absolutely. night, where it's at a, such a rapid speed. Do you know why it was at a rapid speed? Was she late cocaine. for something? Did she have to get something? It was cocaine. <laughs> she every night she would take a bump before I Rainbow love that. High. She's oh, Patsy. such an inspiration. And then every Saturday night and Friday night, she would then, after doing two shows a day, would then yeah. do a club club act at um, a bar called Le Mouche. And there's a whole Patty Live album called Live at Le Mouche. <laughs> 
uh, where she does rainbow height, but also <laughs> sings um, eyes and mouth. She does all the parts. <laughs> There's a sped up um, version of Downtown by Petula Clark that she does. That's yes, great. is this the one you played in when we went to Berlin? Probably. I'm, yeah, I'm a it's big, a one. You know me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to say here, Rainbow High is the best song from that musical. Oh, it's yeah. Oh. It's probably one of the greatest key changes in musical theatre. <laughs> That's why I adore Madonna in the film. Her, she doesn't take it, she doesn't maximise that key. She thing. doesn't do a lot of things in that I movie. I don't like film. Madonna. I don't like, the, I don't like the film of Vita either. That's another problem I have. All my desk comics models expect me to outshine the enemy. I won't disappoint them. I'm their saviour. That's what they call me. You don't like I don't Donald like Trump her. Trump. The film is done. I love Jonathan Price and I love Antonio Banderas, but I... What about Jimmy Nail? A no, nice I... night. Oh, I love that bit. That's one of my favourite bits. The whole I film's great. I'm sorry, these are bad takes. The film isn't great. The <laughs> film is a good take. The film isn't great. The film... The film... ...is number three. We'll get to this later. Is number three on my list of best musical, musical. adaptations. <sighs> Interesting. Number two, can you guess number two? Into the Woods. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> can you uh, guess number, number two, two and number one? Hairspray. It, Hairspray's good, but it's not Greece. number two. Uh, Sound of Music. No. Good guess. It's number one what we should be talking about. Number right one now. is West Side Story. <laughs> no, stop it. We're, we're talking about Ivita, aren't we, today? Uh, number two. <laughs> Number two is um, is, is Rocky Horror. Oh, maximizes. Oh, yeah. I, I think you've covered all is, of your two, you've covered your top three then, Tom. I think what it is is adaptation, and we're going to talk about how this why this is the best adaptation because anyway, we'll to get to that what? later. Okay. Uh, let's just do it now. With there's no structure this week, we're, we're throwing it out. I'll I'll say this is a bonus episode because it's crazy. <laughs> Right. Chaos. This movie, in its structuring, my biggest problem with the stage show of West Side Story is that, and it's and it's a problem that they had they had to face down in '61 is that Act One ends with the rumble, and it's an incredible end of Act One. Your problem is then, and they said this at the time: Sondheim, your Prince, Lawrence, Robbins, all of them. People would not come back for the second act if it if they knew it if it started miserable and was just going to be another hour of misery. So you need them to do G Officer Crookie. After killing some, what after seeing their best friend die and killing somebody, they suddenly jump into G Officer Crookie. Doesn't make any sense. It's a it's it, it completely ruins the thing. In the film, you've got Crookie right after America. So you're still in the happy time, well, happy or whatever. And also, I like the back-to-back -back juxtaposition of America, you've got them taught, uh, and the crookie, because at the end of the day, they're both group numbers where jets slash sharks and their significant others discuss the problems that they face on a day-to-day -day business in society and the higher-ups. Then you've got cool, which in the stage show comes before the rumble cool is an infinitely better placed song after the rumble and you've got that that in that in the garage which probably is my favorite best, yeah best yeah is my favorite dance number just that it's the best that dance raw number. and it goes on for and it and by the time that it's done you completely forget that you've been watching it for sex, sex oh, like, it's so six good. or seven minutes um, yeah, it's an impeccable number, which is why I think it is the best adaptation. Any cap point, counterpoint? I say, let them crash. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking of like adaptations and stuff, did you know, because when I was in America, I went to America, uh, when I was in America, uh, they did a Rocky Horror screening, 
and uh, I did all the call outs and everything. And there was a lot of people who didn't know them, and it was quite annoying. Very nice. Um, my funniest part was when I made up one <laughs> on the spot, and everybody laughed. And it was when they go, uh, we're going to go back to transsexual in the flat in the solar system of Transylvania. And I went, oh, and then, and then everybody laughed. It was, it was <laughs> one of the better moments of my life. No, I'm kidding. Not really, though, am I? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. In the American cut, there's no um, superheroes. And back to... No, you know, <laughs> super, you know, you know, super, you know superhero, you know. Uh, and superheroes, uh, when they're on the floor, and, he, and, yeah. and, and he's not in his wheelchair, and he's just like... Um, hmm. It's like when they change all the voices in the American Shrek. What? Not all the voices. It's the, the voice of the, the ugly American stepsister. The American Shrek. There's no, only one in the Shrek. In, wait, wait, wait. In the in the English version of Shrek, the voice of the ugly stepsister is different to in the American version. Why? I, I think. Because some somebody did like a some English man did like a funny cameo thing, just like Jonathan Price. for the lols. I think I it think the someone... biggest gone. Yeah. Uh, the biggest travesty of changing voices in Shrek the Musical is um, have you seen the uh, awards evening where they do um, um, Duloc and all of yeah. the uh, performing people and there's that woman with the mic and it's on incredibly loud. <laughs> and it's terrible. Thank you. Tom, what are your Shrek the musical opinions? Um, I saw it in Philadelphia um, the first time. It, so it, it, it wasn't... Uh, it, so it was like at the Walnut Street Theatre picture, um, which is the oldest <laughs> theatre in America. And so it mm. wasn't a touring production because they don't do a lot of tours in America. Well, no, they do, obviously but it's with ones that have, you do, they come off Broadway and then they do a tour. So it was like a re, so it's, it was not an amateur production. I don't know, somewhere between an out. It was like a touring production. Was it regional theatre? Yeah, whichever way you yeah, want. Okay. Yeah. And um, I thought, yeah, re quite bad. Uh, I liked Farquaad, um, Benjamin Dibble, uh, my wonderful teacher. Uh, played played him. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, not a big fan. I, I went to see it New Year's. Uh, oh, Boxing Day two years ago at Leeds, and it was terrible. <laughs> um, it was <laughs> not one to mention. Really. Words. Um, I haven't I haven't seen a good version of it since the Brian Darcy James like mm. recorded. That is very good. Um, but y you go to watch it live following that and you think oh oh no i know there's yeah. two versions of it isn't there yeah oh did they pit, did they uh, patch it up they've made it worse oh <laughs> yeah yeah the original broadway i think like yeah had like all the best bits in it but even having said that it's not like i saw it in drury lane i wouldn't see it again Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it in my. Did it, when did it come? When did it even come to the West End? I it was in the West End for like three years, I think. Oh God! I saw. I, yeah, it was like a birthday present when I was like eleven. So it was funny. It was like funny, but like a Shrek. Like <laughs> it has a couple of good songs. What? Who I'd be? Which one's that? Mm. See, this is this is my biggest thing. Cut to no idea. If it wasn't for the greatest showman getting like gagged and forced down my throat for the, <laughs> for the months later, as soon as I left that cinema and I was at, sat in Bella Italia, I couldn't remember one of the songs. Um, I mean, what what's up, Dulock? That's that's the one for me. That's the <laughs> the big Duloc. one. I know that one. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of Illegal Shrek. The, um, the edit oh, like they did the... with Legally Blonde. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I like. I watched that repeated. <laughs> the really bad Scottish accent. 
Oh, oh is the God. um is do they change hot tranny mess? Is that what yes. is that what the changed version is? They change it to <laughs> because the I other wore race, not racist bipolar. That's it. <laughs> I was like the review. I think that was the same. Yeah, it's not when too, I saw it. Too bad, I guess. Well, I was listening to the Cheers theme the other day, and that's got. <laughs> and so you, so your husband wants to be a girl. You <laughs> wanna go where everybody knows your name. I mean, it's not transphobic. I guess you would still be annoyed if your husband wanted. Well, I don't know. I don't know the politics of it. Um, Rotterdam. What was the name of that play where there were lesbians and one of the lesbians wanted to be a man? This could be Rotterdam. I don't know. And that, that, was, that was the crux of the play, was that um, the, the lesbian, she wanted to stay lesbian. Was it just called? Lesbian Changes. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> What? Sorry, I, what? I, th I thought I knew what you were humming now. What are you, what are you humming? I, I, I was doing David. Oh, David. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, changes. Change, change, yeah. I don't know why I said changes as Moira wrote. Changes. <laughs> <laughs> Herb Erlinger. Herb Erdlinger wines. <laughs> Who brings the muskmelon goodness to his oak chardonnay and the dazzling peach crowd bat pull to his Riesling Rioja. Come taste the difference good fruit can make in your wine. You'll remember the experience and you'll remember the name, Herb Erflinger, Bert Herngeif, Irv Herblinger, Bing Livehanger. Back to West Side Story, 1961. So uh, <laughs> now, YouTube comments. I love West Side Story and The Sound of Music and Annie and Bye Bye Birdie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Why have they loved West Side Story with Annie? Excuse me? Ask me what number four is. The modern adaptation. <laughs> You're Annie. correct. Cabra <laughs> Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> Annie is probably, if I'm completely honest with myself, in my top 25 films of all time. I mean, it's not. But... It's, I love Annie. I would never, I would never choose to watch it or Tim, listen to Tim it. Tim Curry, or... Bernadette Peters, Carol Burnett, Albert Finney. Um, yeah, I, 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 What's the name of the Fosse one? What's her name? I have no qualms with the integrity and the talent of all of these individuals, but I, I would. I, it's just, this, it's just Annie, isn't it? Like, I, ju I just don't. All... I don't enjoy Annie as as a musical. So exactly. No, it's, well, I'll, it's the way that Cats I would was watch scored all... in the first place. Well, if I have I would... to do it, well, if I have to do it alone, I will do a Cats. Uh, no, a, not a Cats episode. <laughs> Anne Ranking, that's a name. Um, oh yeah. Bob Fosse, all that jazz. I'll have to be. A... We're not yeah. talking about that. We're not having another tangent. We're going to stick. <laughs> we're going to go before we do twenty minutes on Bob Fosse. Tommy uh, Vermiglio. Everybody loves musicals. <laughs> That's all they're saying. Um, it has been my favourite musical for years, and even though I no longer continue to love it, I still consider it one of the best in the history of cinema. Oh, what happened? Oh. I'm sad to what happened to Natalie Wood. Do you want to, should we break this it's, down? I, I say, ha, it's taken us a, an impressive amount of time to not to mention not Christopher Natalie Wood. Wood's, <laughs> Natalie Wood's <laughs> mysterious death. Um, Speedboat. <laughs> Yes, so she was famously with um, Ah Ah Robert Richard. Oh, Robert, she... Be, Rob, she was married to a Robert and a Richard. Robert Wagner, Wagner? Robert Wagner, Wagner, Robert. Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> Love Wagner. <show>. Wagner. <laughs> 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 Robert, Robert Wagner, um, and, they, <laughs> and he was, and he was famously a bit of a abuser, and um, 
and drank a lot. Uh, ironically enough, they did a production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, uh, which she wow. is great in. Uh, Laurence Olivier is pretty good in, and he is as flat as a bloody ironing board. He is really terrible in it. Uh, and she, and uh, yeah. Anyway, and they were on, and apparently... He's shady, isn't he? He's shady, Robert Wagner, but she was allegedly having an affair with Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. <laughs> And then, oh, you wouldn't kill her. and then they were on the boat uh, having a party and she fell overboard and hit her head. And it's Christopher Walken was on the boat and it's heavily mm. suggested that Robbie, Robbie W. <coughs> pushed her. Poor Natalie Wood. Yeah. So um, Chris, do you think Chris Walken knows? Oh, he knows everything. <laughs> It's not the dead zone. <laughs> dead zone, great film. Um, yeah. Well, the, you've got the Rebel Without a Cause thing of literally those three stars all died tragically within the decade following. You've got James Dean, obviously, uh, in his, in a, on his motorbike. Then you've got Sal Mineo, who got stabbed. Um, the, his agent at the time said it was a mugging, but it was very clearly a, a gay bashing because uh, he was known for his um, escapades with uh, risky gay lovers and he got stabbed. Uh, and then uh, Natalie Wood, poor Natalie Wood, uh, one of my granddad's favourites. Uh, James Dean was considered but couldn't make it due to his untimely demise. Odd way to put it, couldn't make it. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Just like Team Beach movie, but instead of West Side Story, <laughs> it's Wet Side Story. I mean, they've just ex they've just described Team Beach movie. Oh, here we go. This is from uh, hashtag hashtag. Greasers and some kind of ballet dancing don't fit. That's the critical opinion of hashtag hashtag. Whereas, hashtag, hashtag should tell that to Jerome Robbins. You can't, he's dead. Uh, Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris versus the Jets and the Sharks. See who wins that. Somebody who's very, very <laughs> angry. Um, somebody who clearly, uh, his wife has made him watch West Side Story. And he's like, yeah, this pussy is the Jets and the Sharks. Beat him up. Uh, best 10 minute stretch. I'm going to say it's the end of Maria into tonight i love tonight i i i just love tonight what can i say for me it's the opening i like the opening not the the opening with as we've now established uh, the uh, <laughs> map of new york but just after that with the the whole dance routine i think it's a a wonderful way to open a movie i love um dance at the gym Dun, 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 but dun, also dun, dun, dun. cool. Mambo. I also like cool. Cool is good. Mm. So, but I like that bit when they do the little dance. That's fun. Diddly, 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 Anything diddly, that's got a big dance and lasts around ten minutes is my favourite ten minutes. Absolutely, yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> I was thinking, well, another behind the curtain. Should we make single minute five minutes because it annoys me every time. Keep single minute and just keep a frustrated Tom oh, on all the episodes. I assure you, uh, I am frustrated enough. Uh, Will's, uh, sorry, Tom's weirdly specific favourite part of the film. I mean, it's not weird. <laughs> 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 I just love Natalie Wood's final monologue. Let's just let's just get to it now. Oh, stop. Where I, I have it here. Because this is my single minute. This is Closing Line Hall of Fame. This is just incredible. Here we are. Uh, lightly, she brushes Tony's lips with her fingers. Behind her, action in font front of a group of jets moves to lead them toward Chino. Maria speaks, her voice cold, sharp. Stay back! How do you fire this gun, Chino? Just by pulling this little trigger? And then, <laughs> how many bullets I left, Chino? Enough of you. Aww. Enough for you. All of you. Enough we of all me. killed him. 
and my brother and Riff. I too, I can kill now. Oh my because God, Natalie I Wood! Now. How many can I kill, Chino? How many and still have one bullet left for me? And then she cries. I think it's, we're going to get to the Oscar travesty and I don't want to reveal too much. But somebody wasn't nominated. And I think that is appalling. Uh, let's get to it now after Will's more favourite uh, part of the film. Uh, again, it's, it's that close of monologue. I also really like the uh, interaction between Tony and Doc, you know, when he... he yes, him and his, that I is good. That's a really nice little scene. That's a wonderful scene. You're playing kids! you kids! <laughs> How many does it oh take? God. How many does it take? She's dead! She's dead! Oh, oh boo -boo. You know, you know what I don't like? I don't like um, you kids. Oh, I can't remember the line. It's you kids are making a making a mess, uh, the world, oh, or something. And then and then one of the kids goes, "Yeah, but it's the way he was given to us." Anyway, I'm not describing <laughs> that well at all. That's a new category. <laughs> Tom lazily describes a part that he vaguely remembers. <laughs> Um, the Oscar travesty. Right, best motion picture. Uh, it won. Um, the only one I've yeah. put up against it is Hus is the Hustler, uh, but West Side Story was correct to win. Best director. It won. Uh, I like this. We've had a lot of episodes now where we just talk about how upset we are that they chose the wrong things, but this week they've got it right. Uh, best actor. <laughs> I don't. Would you? I. Oh, oh, you can't see it anymore, can you? Yeah. Oh, you can? Yeah, I can see it. Pardon me. Uh, right. Best actor. I don't know. Are we putting Richard Bamer in there as Tony? I wouldn't nominate him. I wouldn't oh. nominate him. <laughs> He's very, well, <laughs> very, very firm on this. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, um... Ah! There we go. That's why she didn't get nominated. Because she was nominated. She already had a nomination. For Splendor in the Grass, which she is great in. She... Go on. Did that used to be, did that used to be like a rule that they weren't allowed multiple, like... No, no. They weren't it's just... allowed to be nominated? No, it's just, it's, um, it, it's in, in, in the industry. It's called splitting the vote. And that's one of the common opinions. Yeah, because you get, because it's like half the chance. Yeah, because that's one of the underground opinions on why Amy Adams didn't get nominated for Arrival, is because oh, a lot I of love because Amy a lot of people voted for Arrival for her, but a lot of people also nominated uh, for her for Nocturnal Animals, mm. um, yeah, which she is great in too, and so there was a lot of split opinion it seems. Uh, George Chicaris won as Best Supporting Actor for Bernan Bernardo. Very good. Uh, and Rita Marino for Anita. Yes. Incredible. Wonderfully astounding. Oh, um, this is a her. great year. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if it, <laughs> it gets uh, Best Screenplay. I'd say Breakfast at Tiffany's is... No, The Hustler should have won. Um, and that's... And then it, Best Sound it won. Uh, best best so cool. Ooh. Well, no, it wouldn't have been eligible for best song anyway because it didn't. Because these were the good old days where they didn't bloody write. Out. What was it called in my miss? Suddenly, I have a child. Oh, I hate that <laughs> song. Actually, I, 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 I'm, you're here. I'm saying all this when actually one of my favourite songs in Evita is obviously "You Must Love Me," which is beautiful. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is one. good. Yeah. Uh, what was the Mini Driver one that they did for Phantom? Oh, I've blanked that oh, film yeah. out of my head. It's, it's that good. Can't remember it. Um, I love Mini Driver. Not in that. Yeah. It, this was when they split Best Cinematography, Colour and Black and White. Um, and it obviously won. It's impeccable. It looks impeccable. Uh, and then it also won Art Direction, Colour. It's a brilliant film. And it won a lot of Oscars and it deserves to. Will's favourite building slash set. Yay. Well, um, my favourite set accompanies my favourite song. I think oh. it's just wonderfully paired. And it's Something's Coming. It's, mm. I think that sat just Ox. outside the back of the 
it's wonderful with your ladder metal thing. <laughs> yeah, That's ladder. what it's... Uh, <laughs> the fire escape. There we go. There we go. I think it's just a wonderful place. It's very minimalist, but it's it. It's wonderful. I like the wedding. I'm uh, sorry. The 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 wedding dress shop and Maria's and Maria's above it with the big sheets playing glass that she's praying at, and then she <laughs> she hits him after uh, for an hour and um, he Creeps through the window. Yeah. Best single minute we've touched on. I think we're all agreed. It's Maria's final. Uh, yeah. It's. Yeah. You, you Although oh, I do like. Convinced? No, that is. But then I feel like I like the whole fire escape balcony little bit. Oh no! Oh no! That's cute. Are you annoyed, but Sophia, as... that in this politically correct world, you will never be able to play Maria, but we can still play? <laughs> Tony and uh, well, should we do this now? Should we talk should about we, this now? Should we do Spielberg? Let's do it. Oh, I we can't pass proper comment. We haven't seen it, but I no, have no but faith. I mean the fact that they're changing the choreography. Are they? Well, yes. they, there's a different choreographer. What's his name? Justin Peck. Oh, shit's sake! And he <laughs> he won the Tony for his choreography on. Carousel. Well, that's all very well and good, but you're never going to. Who knows? I'm sure. I know. Sure, I'm sure somebody said that about Fosse at one point. <sighs> but it's like how they. But I feel like Fosse did. I mean, Cats was shit. The only thing I like about the show of Cats is Gillian Lynn's choreography, yeah. and the fact that that got changed did nothing. Did nothing to improve it. So. Oh. In fact, I think it made it worse. I'm it not a, I'm not a major worse. dancer, but I knew that some of that choreography was dreadful. What was it? It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was, it was just uh, horrific. I think my favourite casting, though, has got to be Maddie Ziegler uh, from the famous hit show, Dance Moms. Oh, Dance Moms! Yes! You, you two can talk for... You two can do five minutes <laughs> on Dance Moms. I'd, I'd rather not, I'd rather not. Oh, you'd rather not, okay. <laughs> <laughs> In, out. Um, do you want 30 seconds on Dance Mom, Sophia, to quench your thirst? Um, I'm not no. fast. I can have my dance, no, I can have my da my allotted Dance Mom's time for the day later. Okay. Uh, best line. Again, I think it's, how many bullets, Chino? And still have one left for me. Um, it's, yeah. it's that. As much as Sundown hates it, I love it's alarming how charming I feel. That's his biggest annoyance. He doesn't like that. Because um, cause his, basic, his basic argument is that an undereducated Puerto Rican like um, girl would not be able to be sophisticated enough to think of a double rhyme scheme. And... Uh, this is obviously the crux of his entire lyricism for the rest of his career. However, I still think that it's a lovely song with a lot of good words. Uh, I also like, uh, which we'll get to in, in my favourite song, is uh, He Murdered Your Love, He Murdered Mine. Uh, it was just incredible. I'd like to put some appreciation for better get rid of your accent. Oh, that is oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful line. I like how you fit all of them inside. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. All, everyone else will have moved here. It's very faint <laughs> and very oddly it's delivered. All of those. <laughs> uh, it's great stuff. Um, oh, we, we, yeah, of the remake. Is there any... Right. I get it. It's not great that a few of them are tanned. I've, I've put a bit of foundation on. It's not great at all. But... Yeah, is Maddie Ziegler a shark or a jet? Who's, uh, who is this person? Uh, oh, you're I don't, I don't know the character. The character she's, she's she, playing a character called Velma. Which I think is just... It's one of... Oh, it's, that's Riff's, that's Riff's uh, lady, isn't it? Oh. 
Well, she's very good. She's a brilliant, she's a perfect dancer. So I'm excited yeah. to see that. Yeah. Maybe we're not, uh, obviously, as three white people, it's not our place to comment. But I've listened to a lot of Latino criticism of the film, and all of them have said, it's not great that they're not Latino, but there's not a single part of the film that they would see as offensive, derogatory, and they especially note Natalie Wood's portrayal and George Shikaris as sensitive, well-delivered, and, and I can completely see, you know, they're not coming out doing, I don't know, <laughs> so that, you know, some racially charged uh, things. Yeah. Every, it's very well, it, we're not talking King and I here, are we? Oh, speaking, no. not speaking of, but it's weird because there's a, there is an Asian dancer uh, as one of the um, uh, sharks. Um, and yeah, a Chinese uh, woman called, I can't remember her name, and I'm not going to attempt. Um, and she basically was Good like, choice. and she was like, yeah, no, I've only ever played Chinese people. And uh, I was really happy to pass for a Puerto Rican. <laughs> it was a really weird way she phrased it. But it was <laughs> funny all the same. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. yeah. So obviously they're going to correct that in the new film at the rip, but they're also going to piss all over the legacy of one of the finer films of all time. What's the change is the one? My change is cancel the remake. <laughs> Will, have you got a change? Um, the intermission. I, I want to, I, it just gets in the way. Oh no, I like intermissions in movies. <laughs> <laughs> Have we talked yet about my love for intermissions in a movie? I love Godfather Part Two. I love Once Upon a Time in America. I love I love a good I love sound of music when that blonde bitch uh, sends her away. What's her name? Countess von Bitch. What's her, what's her actual name? Oh, um, I don't know. It's probably like Elsa or Helga or something. Yeah. And she's like, Maybe you should leave yeah. And then Maria has to go. How upsetting. And um, I like that. And then you eat big intermission. Because these are long films. I like intermissions. Uh, Sophia? Yeah. Any changes? What? If I could change anything, like, if I want to change anything about the film? Yeah. We're no. giving you the power. Uh, no. No. I would change... Oh, oh. oh. Um, I think for the film, yeah, the f they yeah. could have done something. Yeah, I think for, they could have done something to make something's coming and Maria just not this, not one of them either. I don't know, cut one of them or do it differently. What? So they're not like the same. What? I just think two of just Tony singing. Like, okay. it's just. Here's a question. Are they going to write a new song for the, uh, for the new movie? Oh, they definitely will. Suddenly, my <laughs> wife is my, my lover has been shot. When I read the novel of Les Miserables, I felt the one thing missing from the musical was the acknowledgement of how central falling in love with Little Cosette was to Jean Valjean and what it's like to become a father in an unexpected way. Suddenly. Suddenly. <laughs> Um, I, I don't believe so, because obviously Bernstein's dead. Um, that's your biggest problem. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, in all honesty, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they pissed on his grave. Oh, too. and it, it's going to be, Lynn's going to write it, isn't he? Oh, don't yeah. Start it. He, oh, oh no. Boycott West Side yeah, Story. Yeah, literally, I would start not Start the revolution now. Oh, it, yeah. He's going to, in the Heights, he's going to be going head to head with it probably, isn't it? What's the story? Is in the Christmas? You, oh, I don't even know. Oh, now my hatred for remaking West Side Story and my hatred of Lynn Manuel Miranda have come head to head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, I never expected this to happen. Uh, what's left from Will's notes, if anything? 
Um, uh, you were talking about anything with a, a 10 minute stretch of uh, dance is just a wonderful thing, uh, yeah. which reminds me of a drinking game that oh. um, the, uh, the Sheffield University Performing Arts Society. Sophia, you're, 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 you're on your side. Will is just about to introduce us to a drinking game. Uh, sure you're, Which, on, you're still on your side. Have we all got our drinks ready? I no, but um, I, but get ready, everybody. There's a scheduled <laughs> episode of Greece uh, for which I'm I'm in. I think will be a, a drinking episode. I think. We'll, oh, wonderful! We'll make that. Um, yes. But the yeah. the rules for this, uh, we did a, a Netflix party where we all watched West Side Story together. And the drinking game was the craziest thing I've ever done. Um, I've got it up here. We have to take a shot when uh, people start dancing. Someone speaks Spanish. Uh, <laughs> someone says shark, jet, Tony, Maria, pretty. That's, that's absurd. America. Um, I, the, the song Maria. Maria, Maria, Maria. That should be that Roxanne. Was, that should people, you know, <laughs> people played the Roxanne it, game. It should instead it be the Maria shot game. Or, or like, it was like a, an actual shot, or was it just like a drink? I presume it changed e 10 minutes everything in. I've, everything I've listed there was a shot. Um, you I'm, drink. I'm, what? what? Take a shot when one minute of screen time passes with no dialogue. Um, <laughs> the, just after, the, after the first scene, I was gone. I, <laughs> um, yeah, I think we should all play this. <laughs> da -da -da -da. <laughs> cry, cry. Yeah. Oh my god! Really, well that's what's left in the, in my notes. I just thought and it's it, long it, as well. This isn't like an hour and a half. I don't know, super bad or whatever. Oh no, super bad's two hours. Uh, but super bad's a classic. Super bad is good. Um, yeah, good god, they could have really made that easy for you. What's left from Tom's notes? I really like the fan. I really like the closing credits. Um. That's that really. Uh, when the soul bass, uh, incredible, and they're all sketched on the ground and on the sides. Is this the best musical to win Best Picture? Your options are West Side Story, Sound of Music, Pardon me, Chicago, uh, Gigi, um, and I believe that's it. Without um, the cabaret. Yes. The cabaret didn't win. Cabaret, Fosse won Best Director. Godfather won best film. Uh, I think West Side Story wins definitely. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. followed very closely by Sound and Music. Uh, I hmm. do love Chicago. Yeah, oh, I was going to say wonderful. Chicago is my close second. I they they did the musical justice in the movie. I'd rather watch yeah. the movie than go and watch it live. Our heavenly Me mother too. Christine Baranski is in it. Oh, and Renee well, Zellweger. She Mary. Who, Sunshine. Mary Sunshine, yeah. Understandable. 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 Did you know who? Pen, quiz question: Who was originally penciled in to play uh, Billy Flynn? Who they were chasing down? Your this clue is good. your clue is. Suddenly, I have a child on Hugh my lap. Really? It was going to be Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Suddenly, you're here. Suddenly it starts. Yeah. They oh. were chasing him for um, cats as well, weren't they? Well, he he said better. no. He, he knew turned better. us off. <laughs> uh, yeah, he knew better. Um, Michael Jackson, he loved West Side Story and he used, yes, to, he used to organize bad. parties. That's what he based the music video for Bad off. Mm. That's what oh, he does. Yeah, and he does a whole, oh. a whole section that's taken from the opening of West Side Story that I used to that I used to learn in my bedroom because I used to be a big Michael Jackson fan. Didn't we all? <laughs> <laughs> um, second new quiz question, who direct, which famous director directed Bad? <gasps> Spike Lee, no. Scorsese. Scorsese is correct. <laughs> um, I had to confuse with the S's. Have we all seen the video of Cher doing all different, all of the parts to this, to our said story? Ladies and gentlemen, for tonight's entertainment. No! 
<laughs> I'll, I'll send it after. Uh, it's an incredible video. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first cigarette to your last time day. Uh, Iconic. Five minutes. Great, great woman share. Uh, it's not a quiz question. Oh yeah, quiz question. In 2009, Obama gave an iPod to a famous person. And on that iPod was all of the music that he considered the, like American and all that. And on there was the soundtrack to West Side Story. Who did he give that iPod to? Prince Harry. Close. Prince William. Lose, Kate the, lose, lose the penis, milk, and then add some wrinkles. The Queen? It was the Queen that gave the Queen an iPod. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, Barack. Devo and the Pet Shop Boys have done versions of Somewhere that are terrible. <laughs> Little Richard did a version of I Feel Pretty, which is terrible. Uh, Salt and Pepper have done it up as a crookie. Excuse me, Mr. Officer. You think we're bad, huh? You want to clean up the streets, huh? Well, you better put society in handcuffs. <laughs> you got a hard job. Music by Bernstein. Lyrics by Sondheim. I'm talking about West Side Story. It's before my time. Police sweat me like the sharks in the jets because I do what I do so they want to get me. If you let me, I'll explain the game. Clear my name and show you ain't a damn thing changed. So don't criticize the way that I parlay. This ain't Broadway. We learned it the hard way. Kindly Sergeant Krupke, you gotta understand. It's just our bringing up key that gets us out of hand. Our mother's all our junkies. Our father's all our Sammy Davis Jr. did a medley with the only instrument being the bongos. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first cigarette till your last time day. Could it be? Yes, it could. Something's coming, something good. If I can wait, something's coming. I don't know what it is, but it is gonna be great. And go, man, go. Not like a crazy schoolboy. Just play it cool, boy. But nobody knows in America what the Rico's in America. There's a place for us. Somewhere a place for us. Um, <laughs> a few fun facts. If they weren't fun enough for you. Uh, I mean, well, I, I, the first one's not that fun. Um, when filming the uh, rape scene, uh, Rita Marino was reduced to tears because when she was harassed as it brought back memories of when she was raped as a child. When she started crying, the Jets immediately stopped what they were doing and tried to comfort her. Aww. Yeah, not, not I, I don't enjoy that. I, I mean, I'd like to hope no one does, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> this is why we now have intimacy coordinators. Yeah. Um, you, you don't enjoy that scene? As in like, I mean, it's not great to watch, no. Do, do, I like how it's... You would cut it, or...? I, mm, I don't think it's necessary. I think there's better ways of, of showing that. I do like the scene that follows it, the doc scene. So, you, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm confused of, you don't think it's a, a sensitive way of portraying the rape, or you think that they should have come up with a different story point for Anita to get angry and say, um, what do you call it? She's dead. I told you, Chino found out, and she's shot here. <laughs> yes. Um, what would you find them? What would you? What would you do? I, I, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. 
I think also, I think that it makes character. it makes the Jets. Oh, like, yeah. What's the word? Not insufferable. Completely unlikable. You know, in t terrible people for the rest of the film. Um, yeah. On a lighter note, the actors in the rival gangs were instructed to play pla 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 <laughs> play pranks on each other uh, off the set to keep tensions high. Yeah. A little bit more cheery. Uh, during the entire production. Okay, here we go. Take your guesses. The actors wore out how many pair of shoes? 500. 500, Sophia? Hmm. 700. 200. Oh. How many... The difference. They applied how many pounds of makeup? Oh, my God. 20. I was going to say 20, but I'll probably 100 say... 100 pounds of makeup. How many pairs of uh, and pants... That was just on... <laughs> yeah, that was George. just on George <laughs> <Garrett>. <laughs> <laughs> In certain <laughs> scenes, he looks like they've used Dulux. He looks like literally. they have literally <laughs> got but a that's, trowel. That's what I find so amusing about, like, especially musical films from whenever, like the kids in Mary Poppins, their faces, mm. even though they're like <laughs> still just white children. Yeah. Those, yeah, those those scenes in Mary Poppins where they dress like Latino gang members and. <laughs> put foundation on really throws you for throws you for a loop in that I mean, film. They may as well be. Rita Marino stated that her line reading of "Don't you touch me" after the Jets attack Anita was her imitating Marlon Brando. Her then boyfriend Brando noticed this at the film's premiere. Oh, so, fun fun that fact. Is a fun fact. Fun fact on that the is an scene. actual fun fact. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the dubbing. So, I hate I. Just, so basically, Natalie Wood, she could hit all the notes. I've listened to it. She sounds wonderful. She doesn't have a lot of power on those high notes. And so they brought in Marnie Nixon, and she uh, did all of that. Um, and then also, the biggest problem is, for me, Rita Marino in um, A Boy Like That because she is clearly giving it her all and they dubbed her over again. And to the, you know, to the unseen eye or somebody who doesn't know those facts, you probably wouldn't notice. You don't notice. I didn't know for the longest time that Richard Boehmer was dubbed. Um, but yeah, it's not great. Who else did Marnie Nixon do some dubbing for? Uh, did she do um, King and I? She, I don't know if she did King did and I. Did she do Lisa in Sound of Music? She definitely did. Um, I don't know why I'm asking you to throw some out because I, I don't have any answers. She did dub, <laughs> uh, she did dub Audrey uh, for I Could Have Done. Or well, the whole film, actually. I don't know why I specified that. Um, Robert Weiser's original choice to play Tony was Elvis Presley. However, Indeed. Presley's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, refused since Elvis would only sing in six of the 12 songs and because he would not have exclusive rights to the soundtrack. Hmm. Greedy. Yeah. Uh, we talked about uh, fucking mm. shit. Uh, most of the original Broadway cast were rejected for the film as either photographing too old. Um, yes. Anyway, here we go. So here are some of the people that they uh, tested. Suzanne Plachet, great name. Audrey Hepburn, Anna Marie Albergetti, Elizabeth Ashley, and then for Tony, Anthony Perkins, Warren Beatty, Bobby Darren, famously portrayed by who? In the film Beyond the Sea. Oh, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, his dream project. <laughs> um, he put all of his uh, money and clout following his American Beauty win into that film and the world said no uh, <laughs> and then 19 years later they said no again uh, <laughs> Burt Reynolds uh, Troy Donahue 
as for you, um, that's not... it's uh, one of Michael Bay's favourite films. I need to check what my final fact's going to be because I always deliver my final fact on the down and then I realise it's my final fact and then that's it. And that's that. <laughs> <laughs> There's some fun and no fun facts about West Side Story. Uh, Tom's big question. I've I've done it already. Is this the best? <laughs> is this the best film to win? Uh, the best musical to win this picture? Oh, no, no, I'm spent. Uh, and I'm spent. Uh, wow. As Austin Powers would say. Um, <laughs> synopsis of a sequel. I don't know if we get one here, really. Doesn't, it, do, it doesn't need one. Yeah, Maria, it need Maria <laughs> goes on to... They could be... A, they could Wait, just... No, before I say something really stupid. Go on. So... Um, they could be like a spin-off that's not necessarily like a sequel. A spin-off of who? Right. Or they could do like... <laughs> I don't know. I've got like it. another love story, like in like the same little place with like the same stuff. I've got it. Like Greece too. <laughs> I've got it. It's it's a great idea. It's gonna it's gonna really work. Maria becomes a famous opera singer, and then uh, Tony uh, actually isn't dead, and he moves to Coney <laughs> Island, and he runs <laughs> a he runs a circus. <laughs> And he invites Maria back for one final performance. And by this point, she's married Chino. And Chino, for some reason now, is a horrible drunk. They never explain that. And he's a gambling addict. Right, we'll cut the, we'll cut the facade. Love never dies. Really bad. It's terrible. That, that's the next There is dream. not one good thing about it. Uh, no. Apart from that Meg gets a, bit of, gets a bit of drama. I like that. Yeah, but her drama is... Uh, oh, uh, she goes mental and shoots Christine. It's just like yeah, this. I love that though. That's that. I like that. I I like um, that journey for Meg. Devil takes the hindmost is a great song. Raoul and Phantom. Uh, I like beneath the moonless sky. Oh, I just they sing all those songs. And I loved you, and I touched you, and caressed you, and impressed you, and I I, I liked those two. Uh, but apart from that, it's really bad. Just, just, who thought? <laughs> right, I get it. Make a sequel. Okay. It could, imagine what it could have been. Let's just, it break, been. It, let's just break down the choices. Who, let's, he buys a carnival in Coney Island. <laughs> Called the Phantasm or something stupid like that. Well, yeah, if why I is it just... Oh, I don't know. Terrible. Well, the film. He shot himself in the foot. He can't make a film. Terrible, all the film terrible. is bad too. Yeah. Uh, but that's another thing that I don't like. The the film for me has a lot going for it. I like most of the casting. I think a lot of the sets. Jared the... Butler. No, this is my point. Who, who, whose idea was it to get Jared Butler? Don't once more! Don't! Oh my god, it's so bad. It, the, the whole, it's all just bad. No, it's not all just bad. It. This is, no, this is my point. A lot of the set, the sets are impeccable. A lot of the choreography is obviously the same. All of the casting of the is bad. Simon, no. no, Simon, Simon Callow. Simon, Simon Callow. Is, oh yeah. Um, I really like Patrick is, Wilson I, as Raoul. I think that Olivia, Emily Beecham, I think she does a fine job. I just don't think I, I mean, I can't remember the last time I watched it. I, I, I don't remember most of who's in it because I just can't watch yeah. it. Mini Driver's not great. I just, oh, well, I love Mini Driver, so I will always like her in anything she's in. A blow job. I'm a big Mini Driver fan. Um, but and yet that you didn't laugh good, at, Tom. thank you, I thought you. I was, it was just no, I knew say. what it was. Don't no, it's you not. It's, I've ruined the joke as well. It's give me, give me a kiss. And <laughs> she, she does a lot. She spills Guinness down herself just to impress Matt Damon and... Um, I mean, 
I don't blame her. I would. Are you going to big thing for Matt Damon as Will Hunting? Good Will Hunting. Yeah, only because like I just like that film. So I'm like, what about Stellan Skarsgård when he's like, "You've got to use the math. The math is the key." Yeah. Did you know how? Well, it's less of a fun anecdote now, but um, th- do you know the reason why they picked Weinstein as a producer? No. Because. Um, they'd got some buzz and so then every studio was ringing them saying we love the script we love the script and what they did was they put in a graphic gay sex scene between Robin Williams and Stellan Skarsgård's characters as a test Um, Uh, oh yes no I have heard this as a test and Weinstein said you gotta cut the gay sex scene and then, and then they knew that he'd actually read the script. Yeah. Fun little fact there about Harvey. <laughs> um, he, you can say what you want about him, but he, at least he read scripts. No, I'm kidding. Uh, don't worry. Uh, closing line Hall of Fame, we've done. Do you want me to do it again? No. <laughs> no, please don't. No, no. <laughs> Never again. Oh, God, please, God, no. So it's been a very odd, misshaped, tangential episode but at the end of the day it's it's been wonderful it's been a musical at the end of the day we have musical mishmash that can be what it's called west side story open brackets musical mishmash uh that's not an imitation of you by the way it's it's an imitation of i don't know uh it's been a pleasure having you sophia i believe that um (laughs) oh no when this airs this will be airing after shawshank redemption and uh, next episode, Will, is The Devil's yes. Advocate, one of our, hey. our <laughs> favourites. <laughs> love Pacino. Is there more to it? Just this room. Hey. And a bedroom? Nope. No bedroom. Where does he sleep? Who says he sleeps? Where does he fuck? Everywhere! Before we leave, Sophia, do you have any opinions on The Devil's Advocate? I do not. I've never, I, I honestly don't think I've ever heard of it before. You've never heard of The Devil's Advocate? No. Uh, can, what? Tom, let's just cut it there and let's finish the episode <laughs> with Paint It Black. Do, do, do. No, <laughs> let's cut the episode. <laughs> right, <laughs> uh, let's reenact. Here we go. So, Sophia, you're going to be Shalise Theron. Will, you're going to be Keanu Reeves. So you two pretend and you're going to walk away. You're going to stand up and walk out of the shot. Okay, so, hey, I'm, I'm a lawyer. So wait, hey, don't you want to try again and be a lawyer again? And then Will's going to go, no. No. <laughs> and then you're both going to get up and leave. You're a star. Vanity, my favorite sin. Vanity, definitely my favorite sin. <laughs> Da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 